What are you doing to help your child's critical thinking skills? And is that even something that you have to think about? Well, if you want to know more about critical thinking and logic curriculum, or you've never even put any thought into it before, stick around. So somewhere around fourth grade, your child's mind begins to switch gears. Have you ever noticed around the late elementary, you know, we, what we call the tween years, where your child just simply seems to go through a change? They are no longer accepting uh, simple facts that we are telling them to be true, and they start to ask why. They seem to no longer need to be spoon-fed and you can begin to give them pieces of work to analyze for themselves and dig deeper for deeper meaning. Well, it's because they are now ready to analyze the facts. They can begin to dig a little deeper. They can begin to think critically about things. Now, while entering into the logic stage is a natural path that our children go on, Children aren't going to naturally learn how to think critically about things. They do need a little bit of guidance and it's not as easy as just buying a critical thinking curriculum. There's a little more to it than that. Logic training overall is about looking at how you teach subjects differently. In the early years, um, in the classical model, they call that the grammar stage you're really teaching them the what about events, the what about facts about each subject. But in the logic stage, you are now teaching them how to understand the connections, the deeper relationships between all the subjects and the whys behind a lot of the events and facts that you have been teaching them. So although the logic stage is something that is taught in the classical model, Charlotte Mason also talks about this need for children to grow in their science of relations, in their need to develop an understanding of the relationship between subjects and events and all forms of knowledge. So our role as a homeschool teacher changes during this stage. In the earlier years, we are really telling our children everything that they need to learn. We're providing them all the facts, the foundation for their later critical thinking. And in this later stage, we're really giving them their space to dig a little deeper on their own, to develop a deeper sense of understanding and making connections on their own. And we are also teaching them to learn more independently, to develop the skills to learn in their own way and doing it on their own. They're learning how to take responsibility for their own education. So what do I even mean by logic? Well, by logic, I mean studying the rules of reasoning, the rules behind how to make sense of an argument, how to look at a passage or how to listen to someone's ideas and weed through what is true and what is false. And logic is really only one form of critical thinking. Giving your student a logic curriculum is not going to automatically make them an analytical thinker. It is just a tool, but it is a very helpful tool to get them on their way into thinking critically. I mentioned briefly before, but I'd like to just say that it is really important to give your child all the information to be able to think critically. A lot of times we think of, you know, children will just take from books what they need to know, what they feel is important. But if we aren't telling them what is important, they aren't going to have those facts to base their critical thinking on. And so giving our children all of the important facts in the early stages is a really important foundation to critical thinking. So logic and critical thinking curriculums typically begin around the fifth grade if they are ready. And one caveat to that is they must be ready. If they are still struggling in reading and writing and arithmetic, they really need to get a solid foundation in those areas first before you can expect them to move on to critical thinking. 
And logic curriculum and training in logic and critical thinking really goes on into the high school years and beyond. I mean, that's really what secondary education, college and universities are really all about. But it's very useful to have a good foundation in those areas before you send your children off into secondary education. So today I wanna to show you what I have chosen for my fifth grade student for this coming year for logic. So according to the well-trained mind, the first level of logic in your student, which is around the fifth grade, they consider it a casual informal logic stage, a year of casual informal logic training. After that, they want you to do two years of what they call informal logic, and then one to two years of formal logic. You could do at least one or two in the high school years, and that would give you a strong foundation to going into colleges and universities. So Susan Weisbauer has a list of different logic curriculum that she recommends in her Well-Trained Mind Guide to a Classical Education. This is just one of them that I chose, but I really love the Critical Thinking Company. They really have a lot of great, really fun, but very thorough curriculum for various subjects for students from kindergarten all the way up to high school. This is the one I've picked. It's called The, Basic, uh, the Basics of Critical Thinking by Michael Baker and it's published by the Critical Thinking Company. And this is one that Susan Wise Bauer of The Well-Trained Mind recommends. So I'm gonna flip through this and show it to you, as well as we are gonna be alternating that and the reading detective uh, for grades five and six. Um, it begins at the grade four, three and four level, and this is the second book. And this is also by the Critical Thinking Company. And it really does teach critical thinking skills well as well, um, more in writing and reading. And this is something that is really useful for SATs in the future years. So we'll be alternating these two books. Now, The Well-Trained Mind recommends that you do two hours of critical thinking curriculum every week. Now, even Susan Weisbauer has said about The Well-Trained Mind's guide that she had to put these time frames down. Her publishers really told her she needed to give some kind of guideline. And so this incremental sort of approach from kindergarten up to high school, these times she says that she does not even really stick rigidly. Well, she doesn't stick rigidly to. You really need to follow your students' um, abilities and levels and that you shouldn't put any undue strain or uh, stress on your student to stick to these numbers. And we never have stuck to these numbers. In fact, I stick a little bit more closely to the times that Charlotte Mason recommends. I find them far more reasonable, yet I'll follow some of these classical um, curriculums because I just find that it provides us a bit more uh, of a stronger foundation to my children's education. So for us, we plan to do about 30 minutes to maybe up to an hour a week, depending on the given week for spent on critical thinking. So let me show you what these two books look like. I'm gonna give you a quick flip through and show you what they look like and what you can expect in a casual, well, let me see, casual informal logic curriculum for a grade five student. So this is The Basics of Critical Thinking by Michael Baker and it's published by the Critical Thinking Company. And if you look here at the table of contents, you'll see that uh, there's a lesson on what is critical thinking, decisions and conclusions, beliefs and claims, finding evidence, evaluating evidence, inferring and inferences, facts and opinion, facts and probable truths, false and probably false, facts and probably true or probably false, Venn diagrams, logical connectives, advertising, agreements and contracts, common errors and reasoning, arguments, valid and invalid arguments, fallacies, analogy arguments, and using critical thinking to make better decisions. So before beginning the lesson, they provide you this critical thinking pretest, where you can see here that there are police holding four men and they believe one of them is the suspect and they interview different witnesses and based on the witness um, evidence, you have to decide who you think the thief is. So it's kind of a fun way to um, go through critical thinking. 
and then you begin the lessons and it's colorful um, they're very um, fun looking lessons and they start off somewhat basic but the lessons actually get quite deep towards the end in fact the book says that it begins at a basic level but ends on quite a difficult level so you may even want to progress through this book through more than just grade five level it may be something that will take you into older ages depending on how quickly your child can grasp these ideas but it really looks like a very fun uh, curriculum it's recommended by the well-trained mind and several other people I know recommend it as well so for me that um, is enough for me to want to go ahead and purchase this curriculum now I got this while it was on sale they had a BOGO buy one get the other one free sale which was amazing and the critical thinking company does have sales like that every once in a while so I would check out their website and see when sales come up because they are a little bit on the expensive side but really well worth it And I just wanted to slow down the flip through to show you that we're in a little bit more of the robust uh, lessons there at the end. And then here are all the answers. So what I plan to do, oh sorry, first here is the post test. So you can check your student to see how they did through the course and if they're able to solve this crime uh, by the end of the entire course. And then after this are all the answers. And so what I plan to do is I will probably photocopy the pages. So also that my older, my younger daughter can use it, but so that, uh, they can resist peeking at the back of the book for the answers and that they can just try to solve all of the puzzles on their own without peeking. But that is the critical thinking curriculum from a critical uh, thinking company. So next I'm going to show you um, Reading Detective, which is also a really great curriculum and, as I said, prepares you for SATs. So here you can see I have both Reading Detective books together. That is the one that we used this year and next year we will be using this one for grades 5 to 6. And I'm going to do just a quick flip through and I'll just show you a few key features of it. Um, here is the table of contents and I won't go through all the names of all the lessons that they do. Let's see here. Literature excerpts, fictional short stories, nonfiction articles, and there's pre-tests and post-tests as well. This is just a teacher's overview explaining how to use the book and then they just have a list, a chart of all the skills for reading comprehension, literary analysis for grades five to six. They talk about all the different packages, uh, passages and what skills that they will be learning through each passage. But if you look at these questions, they are essentially like, um, the SATs where there is a passage that they will read and the passages are broken down by numbers and letters and then through reading them they will identify different key features that each test will look at. So here is two pre-tests where they're just going to sort of see, you can see what level they're at, but it also tests what they knew before they began the program and then of course again there'll be post-tests to test what they understood at the end of the program and then this is what the uh, passages look like so this is literature excerpts passages from classical works and they will then have reading comprehension questions to see if they can identify different parts of what they are teaching throughout each lesson and it's straightforward every lesson will look like this uh, and it moves from literature to fiction to nonfiction, as I said from the table of contents.
As you can see here, they're also reading passages about science and geometry, so they're really touching on lots of different levels of knowledge. I hope you found this helpful, and I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.